YouTube, welcome back to another video. Today what we're going to go over is how I made 40% or well it was 40% on a live account, not my FTMO, but how I made 40 risk to reward by shorting Bitcoin earlier this week. If you enjoyed this video or find it helpful at all, please leave a like and a comment on this video. I really appreciate it. So today basically we're going to cover my analysis behind it and my reasoning okay and i'll go a little bit more in depth than i usually do because i know everyone's kind of interested in bitcoin and most people only buy bitcoin and when people heard about me shorting it when i talked about it everyone was saying oh i don't know about that blah 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 blah, blah. but so far my analysis has been holding true and obviously i made 40 risk to reward so we're going to go over that today so really quick you'll see how here inside of my discord I have my schematic drawn out. I called out at everyone, I'm shorting Bitcoin. I already got the first move that I was looking for to confirm the breakdown of structure here. And then we're gonna keep watching it here. So we're gonna go onto the chart now and look at this. So right here, this is the higher time frame chart for GJ, not GJ. Bitcoin, I'm so sorry. So Bitcoin, there's a little fundamentals behind it, but the way I trade, the technicals always line up with the fundamental analysis. So if you do pay attention to the fundamental analysis, then it, it kind of it might help you. But at the same time, every time I've traded with my analysis and people not every time, but oftentimes people will say, oh, like there was news happening. This happened, this happened, blah, 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 blah. And I, I'm like, OK, I don't care because if this presents itself, I take that trade. And at the same time. Typically, a lot of people say they avoid trading during news because of high volatility and things like this. But in my opinion, and a few other people in my group will agree, that news speeds up order flow, basically. Okay, You can catch a lot of great trades in news, and the news gives a lot of reason for stuff to happen. Like crazy wicks and like FU wicks and crazy moves that don't make sense. And people just attribute it to, oh, that was, that was news, you know, and that's why you don't trade news. Or you can make money off of those moves, okay? So here, right here, starting out on the higher time frame, obviously everyone knows Bitcoin is very bullish. I'm not saying that I think it's going to crash, but we're going to talk about how I was able to profit off of shorting it. So here, in the several videos I've made, you know that I discuss imbalances and FEGs a lot. And every market that's, that has some sort of exchange or trade always searches for an equilibrium of price. It always tries to have the most efficient price as possible. So there are ways to find inefficiencies in these prices in the market. Right here, there's a monthly fair value gap or FVG. And so basically, that means the market has reason or sentiment to go lower. That also lines up with a few other points of interest that I won't talk about necessarily, but... At the same time, like you've seen in my other videos, I always have a magnet near my FVGs because it's basically a, literally a magnet pulling the market here. There's a lot of liquidity in this area and there's inefficient price action in here, okay? Second thing, you see there's a Wyckoff schematic happening, playing out. Obviously, if you don't know Wyckoff, then it's probably a little harder to trade. But at the same time, if you do know Wyckoff, then this probably wasn't a huge shock to you. And at the same time, this higher time frame Wyckoff schematic is not complete. The final schematic should break beneath these lows, probably into this monthly fair value gap, or maybe even into this sideways delivery here, okay? Before it then goes moonshot, or maybe it goes up and then fluctuates more, whatever you want, okay? Anything is possible. But these are basically the areas that I'm interested in seeing the market come to. So here you can see how basically this Wyckoff schematic, as you know, it, it's manipulating highs and generating liquidity on the bottom. This liquidity was delivered to us in the form of a trend line. This was the most obvious thing. If you think this trend line was going to hold, then I don't know what to tell you, okay? So anyway, at the same time, I also use volume. I, I won't really discuss the volume, but you might be able to pay attention just by this, you see. Anyway, okay? some sort of divergence in volume and price action. So the last thing is the, um, the, the difference in supply and demand, which kind of has to do with the volume. So the higher price goes, the demand that is being put into the market and bought up 
it's considered less valuable or it's considered weak demand the higher price goes because obviously the higher a trend goes the more people are going to buy into it just because they see it's going up bitcoin perfect example and so this causes one a lot of liquidity but two it makes the demand poor quality so at the same time no institutions or bfi or smart money wants to invest their money or buy in in poor quality demand they don't want to buy in at high prices where other retail traders are basically trading okay so if you make your trading around these institutions and or whatever you want to call it smart money then typically your trades will be protected and as you see where i entered on the trade it's like a protected high market has not come back at all market's just been breaking down it's even broken beneath a few structure points it broke beneath the previous weekly low it broke beneath this structure it hit this point of interest here this one minute point of interest so this move this bounce was expected however with this break beneath this structure and other structure points that might give us indication that the market does want to keep breaking down lower all right so also in my previous videos like we talked about we know each one of these labels is a smaller schematic so let's open that up let's go to the lower time frame wyckoff and then let's go on to here we go all right so we'll start at the top and not that i don't want you guys to see this but this is necessarily an incomplete schematic so i'm not sure what will happen here but right now let's look at this so here and this is the first move the first Wyckoff schematic and it just looks like pretty much every schematic I show whether it's on the one minute or the daily or the four hour it's all the same okay our buying climax automatic rally sign of weakness our UT or our UTAD and then here you can see how on smaller time frames we get the break beneath the structure points just like this in price delivery like that so we know that this move was caused by some sort of institution or BFI we get the mitigation and then the move to follow through these important structure points okay confirming this distribution once we break beneath this sign of weakness and this break of structure we know that price is very likely to keep going down okay now the only way price will keep breaking up is if an institution or a bfi smart money whatever buys in extremely heavy but the idea is and what i teach everyone is they cannot do that at market order or market execution like you or i they can't just buy in here and they won't at these high prices one they won't and two they necess they really can't okay they have to hide their orders so you have to find out what areas they're likely to hide their orders in okay so here this is a good example this area was a perfect place for some institution or bfi to buy in and most likely they did at some to some extent here that's the only way this move up could be caused and at the same time if like i said if you trade fundamentals i know there's like this twitter called like whale alert where they said that like some chinese like bitcoin account or something sold off like nine thousand bitcoin and that's what caused this move down that's exactly what i'm talking about they can't just sell off at once they have to distribute and then at the same time if an institution wants to buy up a lot of bitcoin they can only buy up what's for sale aka this bitcoin that caused this move down and this buy-in right okay if you're catching my drift here so at the same time we get this break beneath and then we get a redistribution price gets pushed back up here manipulating highs testing areas of supply to then keep breaking beneath price and like i said i don't know if bitcoin will continue moving down to my target which if it does that's about an 80 risk to reward with the stop loss in the entry i had but already like i said it ran to about 47 but i just had it around 40 all right and so here this y cough that's forming it could either be moving up to hit some sort of point of interest to then keep breaking price down it might hit here to reaccumulate and then keep delivering price higher this is the one that i think is likely but we'll see what happens or it might not even go that high it might come up somewhere into this delivery to then keep breaking down or reaccumulate all right 
We'll see. And that's why you have to trade based off of what the chart gives you, not what you think is going to happen. And this is kind of the thing that I talk about Bitcoin so often. Even though it only goes up, that doesn't mean there isn't downward moves. And that doesn't mean that you can't profit off of downward moves. As you can see, there is a lot of technical analysis that gave me sentiment to sell here. There is Wyckoff. There is liquidity. There was supply and demand. There was a whole bunch of stuff. There was volume. So if you guys found this video helpful, um, leave a like and leave a comment. And hopefully I'll have an updated video whether price keeps breaking down or if it creates a new all-time high based off of this zone. All right. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.